New England, uh, we have uh, a lot of forest and, so we, and we have a lot of bears. Well, the Cape Cod bear was, was a young male and adolescent males, uh, adolescent male bears will disperse from the area that they were born in. And I think it's really one of the most significant environmental developments here in the last generation, and that is the introduction or reintroduction of species that reappeared on their own or introduced. The problem comes from having a large carnivore come into an area that's so populated by people. A bag of food hanging from a tree is called a, pear, a bear pinata. In the United States and Canada, black bears, they're not in danger. They are actually doing quite well. We also have a uh, expanding population of humans. And so as we grow, we are also finding that a lot of people are living in bear habitat. Uh, many people wanted the bear to wander back off the Cape on his own. Well, we had two different perspectives on this. There's certain rules of behavior when you're in bear country, things you do, things you don't do. The difference is we can, we've always tended to think of there's bear country and there's our country. Both uh, people and bears being smart um, does bring on a certain curiosity, and that is often how people encounter bears and bears have that curiosity as well. There has to be certain parameters for how a bear is allowed to behave. Uh, back around 1940, we started to see a shift. Bears were considered vermin by many, and there were bounties on bears. And we had this image of ourselves, I think, back in the 60s and 70s, that we were the determiners, we were the deciders, okay? It was we who decided whether a species was going to be saved, going to be preserved, or allowed to go extinct. 